My name is Carol Dodsworth and I live here on a council estate in Hackney, East London. This is my friend Ruji, who I met through my voluntary work. I don't want the cameras in my flat as I don't have much and I do have my pride. I think about 50% of people living on this estate are either on low pay or out of work and on benefits, so we don't need the life of Riley around here. We don't want to be pitied either. But people do need to know the facts. So, Rudy, what's your situation job-wise and benefits-wise? Um, well, I graduated last year and I've been looking for a proper full-time job because I really wanted to get into work as soon as I finished, but I haven't succeeded in that. I mean, I've literally just been waking up every single day and looking for a job. I um, had about 14 interviews, not much success because it's just way too competitive and there's too many un unemployed people at the moment, so it's just really tough. Um, and I'm, yeah, just not on any benefits, just doing lots of different jobs um, in order to just about... Survive. Yeah, every month. But yeah, what about yourself? Well, I've been on incapacity benefit for five years because okay. I've got loads of different health problems. Yep. I get paid fortnightly and I get £194.40 a fortnight, right. which works out to £97.20 a week. Okay. And I, d I do get help with my um, rent and council tax. Mm -hmm. So I pay, I've actually written it down, I've worked it out for myself. Um, I get, I pay £5 rent. Yeah. Gas and electricity, I pay six fifty and eight pound a okay. week uh, on pay card, and same with TV license at six fifty. Spend about twenty pounds on travel a week, mm -hmm. and then there's catalogue, which I yep. buy most of my clothes from. It's the only way I can afford it is to pay off yep. bit by bit, and that's about a tenner. And then there's about thirty pounds for my cigarettes oh, okay. a week, and that works out to eighty six pounds. Which How leaves that me <laughs> that leaves me with eleven pounds twenty a week wow. to buy food, toiletries, cleaning stuff, yeah. or, you know, everyday yeah. stuff. And I can't if if something breaks down, like if my TV breaks, uh -huh. uh, I can't just ring someone up and get it fixed or go out and buy a new one. Yeah, I, I'm stuck. Yeah, it's um, not enough. No, because mm. I I don't have money to save. Yeah, and then as I said, I got like quite a few health problems i'm on eight different medications yeah i'm not entitled to free um prescriptions or dental care or glasses well, and all that really not on. no okay. and that's seven pound 20 each and that works at to um 57 pound 60 if they all run out at the same time yeah which is is virtually impossible Ridiculous. for me that that really mm. does mess me up the money never lasts two weeks yeah um it's like my money's due next week and I have no money left. Yeah. So, you know, I've I managed to go and do a little bit of shopping. Um, yesterday I got a small small um, carton of milk, mm -hmm. um, a freezer, microwave meal. Yeah. Because I can't even afford to get my cooker. Of course. So London. what do you do? Do you end up borrowing from friends like I every single I don't month? like I don't like to borrow at all. I don't yeah. borrow. Okay. Don't have a debit card or credit card. Yeah. Anything like that. So if I haven't got it, yeah. I'll go without. Yeah, I think mine so. sort of probably works out similar actually to yours mm. about, because with the part-time job, um, I'm still not on the, the, I think the government threshold is like 6,000 something in order to get taxed. So I don't get taxed, so obviously not getting enough. Um, and roughly about four some, 400 and something a month. Um, but I do borrow, I have to borrow from my family and friends and then it's just like a cycle really, every single month, in, out. Yeah, you get you know, your money, yeah. you pay it back, and then you have to borrow it again yeah. <laughs> to survive for the next month. And I've been sort of, I guess, lucky in that sense because I still live with my parents. So mm. with regards to, you know, food, it's sort of covered. But I mean, my family are from a low-income background. So from, what, when I was 16, when I started earning, um, I'd always give, like, a share of it um, mm -hmm. home just to contribute and help because... And they really, you know, kind of hoped that now that I've graduated, I can get a job and actually, you know, pay a significant amount, yeah. um, which hasn't worked at all. Again, it works out if you're on job seekers allowance, you only get a measly, was it fifty pound a week? Something like that. If you're yeah. if you're under twenty five or something. Yeah, yeah, so, or less. Yeah, or, yeah. So it really doesn't work out on the threshold, and 
you know, because of where I live and how much I have to travel. And also, um, I sort of help family-wise by dropping the kids off. So petrol is just ridiculously high at the moment. Oh, it is. So, you know, for my income, because I, I don't like to borrow money for my car. So you're saying it's really difficult to find a job. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you find immigrants are, are getting the blame for taking our jobs? Well, yeah, there has been a lot of, with the recent elections, I guess, mm a real emphasis on immigration as mm. you know being sort of the cause or the concern about taking jobs away but it's quite ridiculous mm. and i think it's just been um i think I, that immigrants i mean I, I i think i read like this research um study that was published to look at why like parties like the bmp have support and it's got nothing to do with immigration it's mm. got it's just the fact that those people within the communities don't have the opportunities, you know, lack of jobs, mm. lack of education, gets them frustrated, you know, and you find like a loophole or some way mm. to sort of blame. Um, so, yeah. No. So basically, immigrants are used as scapegoats. Yeah. You know, I was homeless for a year before I got this place. Yeah. And people say, no, it's because all the foreigners get in the, the houses. It's and ridiculous, yeah. That wasn't the reason, it was because other people were more needy than I was. Yeah. yeah I was homeless. I didn't have any dependents or, mm -hmm. you know, other issues that put me to the top of the list. Yeah. And to me, the solution is is to build more houses, you know, and build more houses will of bring course, in more yeah. jobs. Yeah. So, possibly not a job for you, but you know, it bring in yeah, more jobs in the general. Of the people, so yeah. yeah. So what about, I mean, with regards to you being on incapacity benefit, like how does it make you feel? Because um, with job seekers allowance, I actually did join up for it. But I left it halfway. They photocopied all my documents and said, can you wait for an advisor? And I left because I was like, I did not graduate to go on Job Seekers Alliance and I refused mm. to do that. And not many people have that option. Mm. At first, it was like, not embarrassing, but mm -hmm. I didn't like to tell, tell too many people. Yep. But now, you know, as I say, I've been on it for five years and I would like to get back into work eventually. Mm -hmm. I don't like living like this because, you know... I don't have spare money, I can't go off and do what I want when I want, yeah. like in my spare time. I can't go on holidays. Sometimes it gets me down. People say, oh, does it make you feel like an invalid? No. And I'm not invalid either. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it's... I suppose there is a bit of a stigma to it. Um, people look at you as if, you know, you're just lazy, you don't want to go out to work. Yeah. Which isn't uh, the case for like, no. the majority of the people no. who are on benefits or who are working really no. hard to get a job and failing miserably. So I think we just really need to challenge this misconception that, you know, people are just lazy and scroungers, which they're really not. Totally agree. I think it's obvious that people on low-paying benefits are not the problem. The lack of decent jobs is.